Hi, I'm Jeff Looney, the Daniel P. Jordan editor of the papers of Thomas Jefferson at Monticello. And in this capacity, I have been editing the papers of Jefferson for more than three decades now. And one of my very favorite documents I've ever had to deal with is one which is actually in which Jefferson does not actually play the central role, but rather George Washington does. So to set the stage, it's August 1793. England and France are at war, and the United States administration is trying desperately to keep America out of that war, to preserve its neutrality. But Jefferson and Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton are in bitter disagreement about this, how we're, how we're going to be able to do that. Jefferson wants neutrality that leans more towards France, which still enjoys great popular support uh, in America because of its support for the American Revolution and uh, it also has some very favorable treaty uh, arrangements as a result of that war. Hamilton is more supportive of England. He is not a fan at all of the French Revolution and he wants very much to ditch this treaty with France. So at the cabinet meeting in question, Hamilton and his uh, main ally, Secretary of War Henry Knox, see this as an opportunity to bring down Jefferson and his political allies and they really see their chance uh, when Henry Knox artfully bring, brings up, reminds everybody of a recent cartoon in which President Washington is made by a mob to mount the guillotine. And at this point, Washington just completely loses it. Uh, and Jefferson's description of that uh, temper tantrum is worth quoting in full. The president was much inflamed, got into one of those passions when he cannot command himself, run on much on the personal abuse which had been bestowed on him, defied any man on earth to produce one single act of his since he had been in the government which was not done on the purest motives, that he had never repented but once, that having slipped the moment of resigning his office, and that was every moment since, that by God he had rather be in his grave than in his present situation, that he had rather be on his farm than to be made emperor of the world, and yet that they were charging him with wanting to be a king that that rascal Freneau sent him three of his newspapers every day as if he thought he would become its distributor, that he could see in this nothing but an impudent design to insult him. He ended in this high tone. And then comes one of the great comments in the whole Jefferson corpus. There was a pause, some difficulty in resuming our question. You can just imagine the cabinet members are all staring at Washington with their mouths open as he finally winds down and no one wanting to be the first to speak. But you have to imagine that Hamilton and Knox thought they had Washington right where they wanted him and that he would now agree to the public appeal. Instead, we see just what a great man Washington was. Jefferson goes on to report that the question was, quote, after a little while presented again. And Washington said there seemed to be no necessity for deciding it now. He quickly adjourned the meeting to the next day. In other words, he realized that he was out of control and refused to make such an important decision until he calmed down. I love the document for its wonderful description of an enraged George Washington and for the way it demonstrates the self-awareness and discipline that enabled him to weather all of these crises, both political and military, in the years before and after. We can all learn from it.